Hey chickadees, welcome to a new video where we will dive into the process of making an 1890s shirt waist. I already have two of these and plans for many more as I love the silhouette so much and they can be customised with different sleeve options. All the patterns I have used are from Truly Victorian and will be linked down below. We begin by stitching two lines of gathering stitches into most of the pattern pieces that require it, but leaving the two back panels and the sleeve poofs to the side for now. Assemble the main body, sandwiching the front side and shoulder seams between the two back panel layers. Now you can go ahead and sew the gathering stitches into the back panels, making them into one single layer. Remember to press all of your seams well as you go. Attach the button plackets. There are detailed instructions in the pattern so I won't go into too much detail on this bit. Just know that one will be flipped to the front and one will be flipped to the back, depending on the front option you pick. Now we work on the collar piece. I have gone ahead and sewn the two collar pieces together along with some silk organza for a tiny bit of body. This is then pressed, pinked and then turned right side out. Press again to make the corners nice and crisp. Make tiny cuts into the raw edge of your collar piece, but remember not to go past your seam line. Match the edges of your collar piece to the notches on one of your collar stand layers. Pin at these points and place another pin at the middle point. Flip it over so the collar is now on top. Lay your second collar stand piece on top with the collar sandwiched in between and right sides of the collar stands facing each other. Pin well and then stitch the layers together leaving a half inch gap at the lower edge. Pink, turn and press well. I haven't shown it here but we then attach one side of the collar stand to the neck edge of the main body. The other side will get hand stitched down at the end. Now we're on to the sleeves, which in my opinion are the funnest part of the making process. Cut out a 10 inch by 40 inch rectangle of silk organza and press out any creases. I will have a link for the organza I use down below. Thank you. 
fold the rectangle in half long ways, but don't press the fold. Line the fold up with the notch on the sleeve poof and then manipulate and pin the organza along the top to the notch on the other side. Cut off any excess at the end. I used mine for the collar, now you can sew in your line of gathering stitching. Attach the outer and inner sleeve pieces. I simply overlock the raw edges to keep them neat and press them towards the outer sleeve. Now we need to mark where we want the bottom edge of our poof to be stitched. It was only after I had made the first mark that I realised the sleeve was inside out, but I decided to keep the footage in as it helps me explain the process better. Lay your sleeve flat in front of you with the inner sleeve facing up. Lay the pattern piece on top. This has marks where the stitching line is, so place a pin on either side of the line you have chosen to use. Since I shortened my poof for this sleeve, I'm using line 4 as my guide instead of line 3. Mark a line half an inch above these points. I used a quarter inch ruler for this so I can see my pins through it. Once I realised my mistake, I turned the sleeve right side out and repeated the process. Pin the sides and mark a line half an inch above the pins. Flip the sleeve to the outer side and mark a line on this side, so that you have one continuous line around the sleeve. Measure across the sleeve whilst it is flat like this and make a note of the number. From this point there will be a lot of gathering, and I will say gather down to fit quite a lot. Double the measurement you have just noted down, this is the circumference of the sleeve, and add an inch for seam allowance. Gather the bottom edge of the sleeve poof down to this measurement and knot each side of the gathering stitches. I know mine is 13 inches and I use the squares on my cutting mat as a guide. Once it is the right size, spread the gathers out evenly. It is now time to attach the poof and sleeve together. Lay the poof down, right side up, then lay the sleeve down with the inner sleeve facing towards you and the bottom hem of the sleeve pointing towards the top of the poof. Grab your measuring tape and find the centre point of the inner sleeve along the line you have marked. Pop a pin in this place or make a mark with your pencil.
Wrap the poof around the sleeve, extending the edge a half inch past the pin and secure into place. Repeat for the other side. The bottom edge of the poof should line up with the line that has been marked on the sleeve. The line will be hidden once the poof is folded back in on itself. Pin the rest of the bottom edge in place, adjusting the gathers where necessary, and being careful not to get any tucks in the sleeve. Stitch the poof into place. I use my thumbnail as a guide as I know it is about a half an inch wide. Leave an inch or so unstitched at each end. Sew together the side seam of the poof. This then leaves you with a small gap between the poof and the sleeve which you can now stitch closed. Flip the poof back on itself and base the top of the inner sleeve to the sleeve poof in between the two notches where there are no gathering stitches. Gather down the top of the sleeve poof to fit the arm side. Since this is my third shirt waist, I can do this pretty much by eye, but only not one side of the gathering stitches so that you can adjust it easily. Do the same with the sleeve head, but this won't need to be gathered quite as much. Lay your main body down in front of you and lay your sleeve down on top with the outer sleeve facing up. It should be placed on the side where it curves in towards the main body. Start pinning the sleeve in, right sides together. Loosely pin it to begin with and adjust the gathers to fit. Once you are happy with the fit, pin all the layers together carefully. You may find it easier to base the poof into place first and then stitch it all together with the sleeve head. And now we work on the peplum. Stitch the peplum pieces together and finish as desired. I chose to overlock them as I did with the sleeves. Fold the front edges in by half an inch, press and then fold them in again by one inch and press. Stitch these folds down, at the same time hem the bottom of the peplum. Lay one waistband down at the top of the peplum, matching up the centre back and side seam notches, and leaving a half inch overhang on the front of the waistband. Loosely pin down all the ungathered sections of the peplum. You will be then left with gaps at the front and back that should be gathered down to fit into the waistband. Flip the peplum over so that the first waistband is underneath and lay the second waistband on top in the same manner as we did the collar. 
Pin all the layers together, adjusting the gathers where necessary. You may find it useful to snip into the seam allowance of the peplum at the side seams to help ease it into the waistband, else you may end up with tiny tucks. Stitch the layers together, pick the seam allowance, flip and press. Attach the peplum to the body with the right sides together, only sewing through one layer of the waistband. The other layer will be finished by hand at the end. I find it useful to run a basting stitch along the top of this layer as a guide for the half inch seam allowance. The end is finally in sight my friends. Mark the position of your buttonholes. I like to use six buttons with one on the collar stand, another two inches below that and one on the waistband. The other three are spaced equally between the second and waistband button. I do mine by machine and use half inch buttons. I prefer to place the waistband button slightly further in than the others as the shirt waist has a tendency of gaping at this point, or you could add in a hook and eye for extra security. Stitch on your sleeve facings, which I always seem to forget about until I think I have finally finished. I place the seam at the middle point of the inner sleeve, though it does get flipped up inside the sleeve so it's not visible to anyone but you. Fold the raw edges down and hem stitch into place. I hand finish the arm size seam allowances with a whip stitch after pinking them. You could overlock them but I like to stitch them to one layer of the back panel so that they are encouraged to sit nicely and smoothly. You may find that the organza is slightly scratchy to begin with but after a few washes this disappears. To remove the gathering stitches I take a flat head pin and stroke it perpendicular to the stitches. It is easier if you loosen the gather slightly by wiggling the fabric in opposite directions. This is why it is best to do gathering stitches in a contrasting colour, so it is noticeable if you forget some. Now it is time to enjoy your shirt waist and become the time traveller that you know you are. I hope this video will help if you decide to make one of your own and if you have any questions please leave a comment down below and I will endeavour to answer it in as much detail as I can. If you liked this new format then please give it a like and consider subscribing or supporting me on Coffee, so I can continue making this type of content.